This time on Splice Fabrication, it's time for a new shop stool. As you can see, I am definitely in need of a new shop stool, and I've had my eyes on one of these for quite some time. But holy crap, talk about sticker shock. $525? I get it, it's made in the USA, but let's see if we can build something a little cheaper, but still maintain all the quality of this design. All right, so here's what I've come up with. We'll go with a similar five leg design so that we've got good stability. We'll add some high quality casters so that things roll around nicely. And then we'll add a nice wide seat so that we've got something comfortable to sit on. Let's get to building. Let's talk about the purchase parts for this build. First, our main central tube that the legs and everything will mount to. This is unthreaded inch and a half standard wall pipe. We'll cut this to the proper length. Inside the, the main tube will be two Acme lead screw nuts. And then threaded through the nuts will be a one inch Acme lead screw. This screw is, um, has a thread pitch of five threads per inch. And then on the other side of the legs, this is 9 16 uh, steel tubing, 083 wall. We'll use this to mount our four inch casters. The casters have a 3 8 16 threaded stud. So we'll cut this pipe to the proper length and we will push stud up through. We'll nut the top and that'll hold the casters in place. All the other parts we need for this build, uh, we'll make ourselves. We'll plasma cut the legs and we'll plasma cut the seat base. And then we'll do a little wood and hopefully leather work for the seat cushion and we'll get to building. Okay, let's get the legs and the seat base cut out. I'm going to be cutting this out of 10 gauge. Next up, we've got to get our pipe and tubing, uh, as well as our uh, Acme lead screw cut to the right length. The main pipe is going to be cut at four inches to match the leg. The tube that's going to hold the caster stud will be cut at one inch to match this side of the leg. And then finally, we will cut the Acme screw to 12 inches, and this will give us the seat adjustability that we need. So we'll go ahead and get those cut using the Evolution Chop Saw.
To allow for adjustability of the seat height, what we're gonna do is fix two nuts inside the main tube. But right now, these nuts are too big to fit inside the tube. So we're gonna grind down a little bit to make sure that these are small enough to get inside the tube and then we'll weld them in place. But we'll fix it on both the top and the bottom so that the, the screw itself is very uh, rigid and doesn't wanna tilt uh, when the seat is on there. So we'll go ahead and grind these down a little bit, get them ready to fit. All right, now that we've finished grinding our lead screw nuts so that they fit inside the main tube and we've prepped the remaining parts for welding, it's time for final assembly. So in order to do that, we're gonna follow the following order of operations. First, we've got our lead screw nuts so that they're spaced on the lead screw to be positioned at the edges of the main tube. So we will leave the lead screw inserted into the nuts for this part of the procedure while we tack everything in place so that we keep everything aligned. But we'll put these inside here, we'll tack, we'll tack, we'll pull the lead screw out at that point, and then finish welding out this groove here so that the nuts are fixed inside the main tube, both top and bottom. Following that, we will then attach the lead screw with one more um, lead screw nut onto the seat pan. So we'll center this up, we'll find the center of, of the seat pan, and we'll weld this in place. After that, We'll have the lead screw attached. We'll have the lead screw nuts inside the main tube. And it's time at that point to focus on attaching the legs to the main tube. And in order to do that and keep everything lined up, what I've done is I've cut a template on the plasma uh, table that has allowed us to insert main tube down the center. And then each of these grooves coming off is equally spaced at 72 degrees. And the grooves will capture this top surface on the leg. And I'll show you here how this works. So um, main tube sits in the center and then we will hold these in place, insert down into the groove, and then we'll tack them all in, um, all five around. And then once we get them tacked in position and uh, we'll weld them out uh, to finish them up. And then lastly, once the legs are attached to the main tube, the only thing that's left is for us to attach our caster tubes, which will go on to the front side of the legs like this. So we'll tack them in place and then weld those out as well. And that will allow us to attach the casters um, to the legs. So um, we're gonna do all of this with our Everlast Cyclone 262 MIG welder. Um, I think we're ready to go.
Next, we're gonna make the seat base. The seat base is gonna be made from three quarter inch plywood. In order to cut a perfect circle, uh, we're gonna use a plunge router with a circle jig. Goal here is to make a 14 inch diameter circle that we can then mount to the metal seat pan that we cut on the plasma table. So with that, we'll get, get to cutting. With welding finished, it's time to finish the seat. So first we'll have to attach the seat pan to the seat base. This is the three quarter inch plywood that we cut out earlier. Once we get this attached with threaded inserts that'll go into the plywood, um, we'll attach the pan with uh, quarter 20 bolts. We will then use our um, high density foam that I've already pre-cut to the right dimension and a nice piece of leather that we've got. And we'll come over and we'll fix this leather over, over the wood and stretch it nice and tight so that we've got um, a good uh, seat surface. And then um, we'll, we'll bolt everything together and the seat will be ready to go. So first up, we are going to um, attach our threaded inserts. We've got our drill bit uh, taped here so that we don't go too deep uh, into the plywood and, and go all the way through. We'll get these attached. All right, the inserts are in. Now let's go ahead and get the leather attached. I have never done this before, so this will be brand new to me. See how this works. Turn it over. Foam down. This will be the inside surface. Center this up. Walk this in from the edges. We're going to attach everything with a staple gun using half inch staples. Try to stretch this leather enough to where the top surface looks really tight. So, here we go. This leather is chrome tanned leather, meaning it's basically been chemically tanned. It is a little stretchier than vegetable tanned leather. My goal with getting a stretchier leather was something that we could hopefully pull a little tighter and make look a little nicer. Try to get rid of some of this excess now. All right, there we go. Covered seat, 
We'll attach there at the bottom using the threaded inserts. With everything painted, we're ready for final assembly. Long time coming. Um, first, in order to do that, what we're gonna do is attach the seat pan to the seat. So we'll line this up onto our threaded inserts. See how good of a job we did at making the holes. And then we're gonna attach the seat pan with quarter 20 bolts. Uh, they have a flat washer as well as a lock washer. These are half inch long. Get them started. Okay, next up is the, are the casters. Again, these are 3 8 16 stud. We'll run them through the tube and then attach them again with a lock washer and a nut. Last but not least is to thread in the seat. All right, there we have it. Our final shop stool looks great. Nice leather seat. Great metal base. If you're interested in something like this, kits will be available on my Etsy store. There'll be a link in the description. It'll come with all the metal parts associated as well as all the hardware necessary. And also these great 135 pound casters. So everything will roll really smoothly on your shop floor. Thanks for watching. Hold on. Ow. What was that? Just a homemade one that I made myself. Homemade one that I made myself. Whee!